It's so cloudy outside, but the lighting in here is actually really good. I'm digging it. Parsnip whippers. Dance party. my channel and happy Monday. Today's video is one that I have been looking forward to for a very long time and that is the cover reveal as well as the release date reveal for the second book in the Shadow Crown series called Renegade Crew. Now I will be doing that reveal at the end of this video but the rest of this video is actually going to be a Q&A. So on Twitter a couple of weeks ago I asked all of you to send me your questions whether they were writing, personal, or professional related and that I would eventually do a video for February answering those questions. So that is what we are going to do today. Just a forewarning, I did receive a lot of questions over Twitter. So again, I'm going to have to kind of pick and choose. Otherwise, this video would never end. So if your question does not get chosen and is not answered, then just wait for the next round of Q&As and go ahead and send it again. And hopefully in the next round, it will be answered. All right, I've got my handy dandy phone case as Kayla and I named it when she was here, Parsnip Whippers. Don't ask, inside joke. <laughs> Or she keeps calling it the Squatty Potty Unicorn, but personally, I like parsnip whippers. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the first question, which is from Bethany. She asks, I'd love to know more about your collabs, how you find them, or if they find you, how you choose, and the different ways you've done them. So great question. Honestly, a lot of the collaborations, especially with other author tubers, have just happened more organically. One of us will reach out to the other one and we'll come up with an idea for a video that we think could mutually benefit both of our subscriber bases. As for brand collaborations, I have rarely been the one to seek out a brand for a collaboration. A lot of the time it's a brand approaching me, which is really neat. And what I like to do when they do reach out is I have them send me the product. I let them know that I want to use it, wear it, whatever it is. I just want to have it for a while. So that way I feel comfortable featuring it to you guys, because if it's a brand that I don't necessarily believe in or I don't really like their products, I'm not going to showcase it in one of my vlogs. So all of the brand collaborations you see on my channel are ones that I truly believe in and that I use in my own personal life. The next question is from Ayla. She asks, with as much time as you devote to writing, your YouTube presence, podcast, and marketing, not to mention your nine to five, how do you manage your time so you can enjoy your other interests? Yet another fantastic question. <laughs> so really what it comes down to is I found the thing that I absolutely love to do, which is to create content. And creating content really falls on a wide spectrum of things. So personally, I really love writing books, but I also love filming YouTube videos. I love creating podcasts and sitting there and just talking into the microphone. I like creating workbooks and guides and webinars. So for me, I just love, I love to create content. When you ask how I manage my time so I can enjoy other interests, it's funny because the things I just mentioned, creating content, that is my interest, that is my main interest, that's what I love to do. So I don't feel like I really have to manage my time because I make the time to do these things that I love. So I hope that makes sense and I hope that I answered your question. The next question is from Jacqueline. She asks, how do you do so much without going insane? I've done my best to try to make time for everything in my life and most of the time I'm just frazzled. So the truth is I don't have the time to do everything and there are a lot of days where I don't fit in all of the things that I would like to do but I do strive to do as much as possible in order to make sure that I feel as though I've had a balanced day. I actually did a recent episode on my That Smart Hustle podcast, which is available on iTunes and SoundCloud. It's episode 29 and it talks about living with intention. And I highly recommend going to listen to that podcast if you're someone who feels like you're just kind of struggling to fit everything into your day and to get it all done. Because in that podcast, I talk about living with intention and setting your focus and your purpose for the day. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into my whole spiel, but I would highly recommend listening to that podcast if you want more details on that. The next question is from BC Books, and she actually asked me three questions, but in order to be fair so I can make sure that I hit as many different people's questions as possible, I'm only going to take one of her questions. So I'm going to answer her second question, which is what do you do for fun slash work outside of YouTube? So for fun, I actually really enjoy being active and being outside. I love taking Denali for her walks. I love going on runs. I like trying different exercise classes like hot yoga as well as spin classes. So really I enjoy being active. That's fun for me. I like to move my body. I like to sweat as weird as that sounds. I just feel really good after I 
after I exercise. And then as far as work goes, I am currently working in a nine to five job in the corporate world and I am a market segment manager for a chemical company. My background is in supply chain, so that is what I graduated with for my bachelor's and my master's. And yeah, you may be wondering what in the world I do and really it's managing sales. It's pretty much a sales role. The next question is from Holly and she asks, were you in any sports or clubs in high school or college? So I was involved in a lot of sports teams in high school. I ran varsity track. I was on the varsity soccer team. I made varsity cheer my freshman year. I was also very involved in the dance program at our school. So yes, I was very involved in sports in high school and I was also in the in NHS, the National Honor Society. And then in college, sports definitely took a back seat, but I was involved in the undergraduate student government as the public relations coordinator at Arizona State University. I was also in the Barrett Honors College, and then I was also in a sorority. I was on the executive board of my sorority, which is Delta Zeta. And I have to say, for me, I really didn't like high school very much. I had a hard time kind of fitting in and really finding my place. And people were just really mean in high school. I would never ever go back and repeat high school ever. But college, on the other hand, college was hands down the best four years of my life. It was just, it was just so much fun. The next question is from Brent and he asks, do you use a series Bible to plot out your series? If not, how do you plot your series and keep details straight? I wouldn't necessarily say that I have a series Bible and if there are series Bibles out there, I would be really interested in hearing other people's perspective and points of view in how they plot out their own series. But really what I do when I'm plotting out a series is I will map out my first book. So I'll make sure I get the world, the characters, all of that fleshed out. And then I will do an act one, act two, act three for book one. And once I have book one figured out, I kind of usually already get ideas for the remaining books. So I'll sit there and I'll do more of an act one and act three for the rest of the books in the series. Because obviously if I know how book one is going to end, then I can figure out how I wanna start book two. I may not know all the middle stuff, but I can usually figure out how I want the second book to end. And I'll kind of repeat that process for as many books there are in the series. So that's really my process for fleshing out an entire series. There's really not a science to it. And since this is only the second series that I've written, that may be something I'll kind of just keep track of and really kind of look at how I do it. And maybe I'll make a video on that in the future. The next question is from Amelia and she asks, this is kind of early, but any fiction story ideas waiting for you after you finish Shadow Crown? So the short answer is yes. That is the one thing I never seem to run out of is ideas for things, which is actually really great because I know that's something people struggle with. So I have an entire notebook dedicated to my book ideas. There's one specific idea that keeps jumping out at me so i have a feeling that that's going to be the next project that i work on but i can't say anything about that yet because i have i have a long way to go with the shadow crown series the next question is from nikki oh pick me pick me <laughs> i have a question nikki love hufflepuff wants to know are there any stories you decided not to write or publish what made you decide to not write or publish the story so actually the alpha drive was originally a new adult contemporary novel and then it was later on transformed and totally reconfigured into a young adult science fiction dystopian novel so that original contemporary new adult novel was never published and it will never see the light of day because it was absolutely awful but other than that, I do have a couple of books that I started writing, but the, the idea for those specific books weren't ever really there. So I don't have any other, you know, unfinished manuscripts lying around. I mean, I have the beginnings of manuscripts lying around, but no, really it was just the Alpha Drive in its new adult contemporary state that was never published because it was transformed into something better. Next question is from Luna Shine Inc. I got to know where that Mercedes came from. Maybe I missed it in a vlog, but you bought yourself a new ride or company upgrade. Either way, hashtag girl boss killing it. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So that Mercedes is all me. That's all mine. I'm not giving the company any, you know, any credit for that. If you had listened to my podcast and kind of, you know, really followed my vlogs, I kind of mentioned that I was going through a lot of the company vehicles that I was being provided and they were constantly having to be in the shop and I was wasting so much time sitting there waiting for them to be fixed. There were a bunch of recall notices on this. So again, not gonna say anything about the company and how that whole thing was handled, but I basically said, screw it. 
I'm buying myself a car. And so I did, and I bought a Mercedes. <laughs> the next question is from Clara, and she asks, hey Kristen, now that KDP has proof and author copies activated, is CreateSpace still better? What are your opinions? So this is a really great question. I've had a lot of people ask me about KDP versus CreateSpace. I can't really give much insight here because I've never used KDP to publish a paperback version of my books. I would imagine that it would turn out just fine, but again, I can't really say because I haven't used it. So for me personally, I love CreateSpace. It is very user-friendly, it's free. So for me, I would just continue to use CreateSpace. I don't think I'm going to venture over into KDP's paperback territory. The next question is from Bax. What content should we provide or give to our email subscribers? I'll be setting up my website soon and I just want to give myself a heads up for the future. So I found that when you are trying to build your email list, you can really go one of two ways. You can either have a monthly newsletter or something where you're giving them updates on your progress and your life and your writing journey or you can offer them a freebie. I found that these two things work best in order for people to provide and freely give their email address to you. I believe the freebie actually works better, but you have to make sure that freebie is something that people actually want to download and actually want to learn about. So that's gonna take some brainstorming and to make sure it's also consistent with your brand and with your platform. With the monthly newsletter, again, if you don't really have much of a following or you're just starting out, it can be kind of difficult to build your email list. So I would definitely go for or the opt-in, you know, that freebie and that opt-in for building your email list. The next question is from Jenny and she asks, when you get an idea for a book, how do you know it's a good idea? What makes you believe in your ideas and start writing them? If I'm being totally honest, how I know when something is a good idea is just a feeling that I get. If it makes me excited and I wanna sit down and just kind of flesh everything out and write down everything I possibly can and just brain dump onto a piece of paper, then to me, that's a good idea. If I'm excited about something, then I know in my heart that it's a good idea. This is why I have a notebook with a bunch of different ideas. If they didn't excite me or if there was a piece missing or I was just kind of like, eh, this idea is okay, you know, I was like, eh, I'm not really gonna touch that right now. Maybe I'll come back to it later. Maybe I'll have a lightning bolt of inspiration. But for the ideas, like for the Alpha Drive, you know, transforming that into a young adult science fiction story. And then also for Shadow Crown, which is my dark fantasy series, I was so passionate and so excited about these ideas when they hit me that I just knew in my heart, I felt it. I felt that they were good ideas. So I know that's not really you know, an objective answer. It's a very subjective answer where it's just, it's very abstract. It's going to be a feeling that you get where you just feel confident and excited and you know that it's the book that you want to write. The next question is from Rebecca. She asks, has your role at your day job changed? I see you working remotely more often and pursuing your writing at full speed and it makes me so happy for you. Oh, well, thank you so much. So with my day job, nothing has really changed in that regard. So I'm still doing what I was doing before. And over the past year and a half, I've really had more freedom to work remotely. I think I've just been taking more advantage of that option of working remotely. So if you see me, you know, during the weekdays, if you see Insta stories where I'm at my house, that's again, because my job hasn't changed just because I'm fortunate enough to have a job where I can work remotely. The next question is from Sam. Should teens publish or will they regret it later on? Heard a lot about the embarrassment of publishing young as it is often rubbish. This is a good question. It's also kind of a loaded question because I know some authors that published their first books or they got a book deal when they were teenagers and their books are absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. I also know some authors that published their books a little bit too early, you know, maybe before they were ready and then felt the need to take their book down and then relaunch it. So really it's going to be up to personal preference. I do think personally for me, I would not have published books when I was a teenager because I still had so much life to experience and wisdom to gain and things to learn and to really develop my writing style. Now that's just for me. That doesn't mean that if you're a teenager and you want to go publish a book that you shouldn't. I think you have to do what feels right for you at the time. Okay, we only have time for three more questions and then I will be revealing the cover for Renegade Crew as well as the release date. So the next question is from Kristen and Shoshana for Life. She asks, what is currently on your writing playlist? Also, I love you and your videos. They've inspired me and I've gotten more work done with my first book. Well, that is amazing. I absolutely love hearing that. So job well done. <laughs> 
and I'm happy that I was able or that my videos were able to help you and inspire you to make more progress on your first book. As far as my writing playlist goes, it's a lot of instrumental type music because I find that if the songs I'm listening to while I'm writing have words or lyrics, then I tend to get distracted and I'll start singing along to the song. My Spotify playlist is always linked in the description box below so you can follow me and check out all of my different playlists. I have other playlists besides my writing playlist, specifically my Girl Boss Vibes one. Make sure you check that out because it will just, it'll get you so pumped up and you'll feel like you can take on the world. The next question is from Cass. She's asking two questions. And again, for the sake of time, I'm only going to answer one. If a traditional publishing company came to you asking you to publish your entire catalog, would you accept? So this is an interesting question. I don't think anyone's asked me this before. In terms of my current books that are already out there, I don't know if I would, you know, just accept right away. I'm not even sure if that's something that I would do because I'm seeing a lot of success with my self-publishing journey and my royalty rates as a self-published author are pretty high right now. So it would have to be something where maybe there was an advance of some sort or again, I would just really have to work with the publisher and we'd have to make sure that it was mutually beneficial for both of us. So the short answer here is I really don't know. I suppose I will cross that bridge if it happens. And the last question is from Briar B. Rose. How do you come up with names? I'm guessing you're asking about character names and really there's no methodology behind how I come up with my character's names. A lot of the times I will look at lists for baby names and sometimes that kind of helps me come up with character names, but a lot of the time I am looking at kind of old English or I actually Google surnames. And sometimes by looking at, especially like old English surnames, I'm able to take some of those and use them as first names, especially for characters in my dark fantasy series. Or I'm able to take, you know, the first three or four letters of one name and put a different ending on it to give it the kind of feel that I want for my book. So that is it. Those are all the answers to your questions for this Q&A. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future writing advice videos. Okay, so now the moment we have all been waiting for. Let's finally reveal this cover for Renegade Crew, which is book two in the Shadow Crown series, as well as the release date. So drum roll, please. Ta-da! So this is the cover for Renegade Crew. I had a lot of fun working with my cover designer on this one. There was a lot of back and forth, and really I'm trying to stay consistent with, of course, the Shadow Crown cover. Really loving the this real contrast between the really dark, almost like gray, blackish background with that gold symbol that again is smoking just like the crown is smoking in shadow crown so that is the cover for renegade crew and let's talk about the release date so the hardback paperback and ebook versions of renegade crew will be releasing on tuesday october 9th 2018 so yes that is only a short eight months away so there is a lot to be done renegade crew is currently in the beta reader process and i'm having a lot of fun with that so it's been really great to get the feedback so far i cannot wait to share this second installment with you guys just a forewarning it is it is pretty dark, but there is still time to read Shadow Crown, to read the first installment if you haven't already, so that way you are all prepared for the second book when it releases on October 9th of this year. I should also mention that as of today, you can add Renegade Crew to your TBR list on Goodreads. If you'd like to do that, just check out the description box below for the link. All of my Amazon best-selling books, The Alpha Drive, The Order of Omega, Restitution, and Shadow Crown are available for purchase on Amazon and Barnes and Noble, as well as the Book Depository and Books A Million. And if if you read my books and you enjoy them, it would really help me out if you would leave a rating and a review on Amazon, since that is where a lot of people go to buy the books. I wanted to let you know that I am also offering the Alpha Drive Trilogy at box set pricing, and you can get autographed copies of all of my books by going to my website at kristenmartinbooks.com and clicking on the Buy Books tab on the menu bar. If you are a fan of audiobooks, make sure to check out my affiliate link with Audible in the description box below. You can get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial for their service. 
Who doesn't love free stuff? So make sure you check them out. Registration for my self-study coaching program for writers called Valiance opened on January 15th and is still available if you haven't snagged your spot yet. If you're ready to turn your dream of becoming an author into reality, then make sure you go to my website at kristenmartinbooks.com and click on the Valiance coaching program tab to get more information, all the details on the modules and to sign up. There is a freebie over on my other website at thatsmarthustle.com called five action steps you can take right now to start showing up for your dreams. And if you benefit from that guide, you will absolutely love my mini webinar series called Hustle Smarter, Not Harder. To learn more, read testimonials, and sign up, go to thatsmarthustle.com and click on the webinars tab on the menu bar. And if you just can't get enough of the girl boss vibes, make sure to check out my podcast called That Smart Hustle. It's available on iTunes and SoundCloud. You can find the links in the description box below. On social media in January, I did reveal the dates and the cities for my first ever domestic book tour for the US and Canada. In case you missed that, make sure to go to my website at Chris martinbooks.com and scroll down and you will see a graphic with all of that information and also make sure to follow me on social media so that way you don't miss out on any announcements or updates price promotions all that stuff is always posted on my social media accounts so again make sure you're following me if you have any questions or think of a topic for one of my next videos please leave it in the comments down below again i want to thank you so much for watching don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out i post new writing advice videos on mondays and personal day in the life vlogs on thursdays i will see you guys next time bye